and you can see they're already working on the front of the vehicle and you're probably thinking, what are they doing? Well, they're ripping off the front bumper because what they're trying to do is get access to the headlight and then he's gonna drive off with this Lexus. And you can see they basically stole this Lexus in under a minute, 30 seconds. And this is what's happening across the entire GTA. We need to be way harder on these criminals. The latest advice to deal with the real problem of auto theft in the Toronto area is Toronto Police Service telling you let the thief steal your car. I'm not joking, this aired on City TV in the big smoke. Toronto Police Service saying these guys are armed, showing up with guns, so don't get in their way. Leave your cuff keys at the front door. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door. Four months ago, we were on our way to visit family and we stopped at a well-known hotel. During our stay, someone tried to rob our truck. They weren't successful, but they took over a thousand dollars worth of belongings. Unfortunately, our truck was then vandalized by our insurance provider and in between dealing with insurance and the robbing, it's been a hectic couple of months. Unfortunately, we were stuck in the city without a truck and just recently got a new truck. Today we are back on our off-grid property, clearing the snow and getting back to our journey in building our off-grid home and on the path to being more self-sufficient. We will be sharing details of what happened to us and the robbery, talking about off-grid safety and the question we get asked the most, is it safe to be off-grid? Stick around friend. This is Off-Grid with Gina and Chi. here now. I came a couple of times by myself to check up on the property but now look the kids are already getting hurt on the hill. <laughs> not hurt, they're not hurt yet. Not yet. Not yet. Getting started. So we're happy to be home. We're gonna clear the road so we can bring our truck so we can get a couple of things. So uh, follow along. Yeah. <laughs> Is that how you're gonna end it? <laughs> Yeah, so after getting here, getting the tractor so I can clear the road to bring the truck over, I just realized I left my air pump to fill up the t inside the truck and my tire is flat. So I'm gonna try to see what I can figure out here. So this is all I could find. Since my pump is in the truck, I'll see if I can, at least so I can get to the truck. Um, but it's a race against time again because it's almost sunset time here. So I think I only have like an hour left and I'm not sure I'll be able to get everything that I need today. I need to come back later. All right, so let's see if this works. I got the pump here. Yeah, it worked. I was able to get close to 10 PSI. Now I just gotta do the back tire now. As you saw there in the beginning, we got robbed. 
and they tried to actually steal our truck. And there was a couple of items that were inside the cabin of the truck, thousand dollars of things. It was our guitar, my husband's um, jacket, like his, his good winter jacket that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And yeah, so it was not a fun couple of months. Wanted to tell you guys what happened, uh, just in case you guys go through this, because if you're in Ontario, if you didn't notice, there is a lot of break-ins going on. But let me tell you guys what happened. So we were on our way to the city and we stopped at a larger, a larger city at the Hilton, a uh, very well-known hotel. And we stopped for the night because it's a long drive from our land all the way into Toronto. We've stayed there so many times. We love the hotel. And the next day when we went to go leave the hotel, we noticed that our truck was broken into. When we saw it, we saw that like the key, you know, where you put the key is it was it was broken into and then the the steering wheel was completely taken kind of like apart, wires coming out. We called our insurance company, we called the police, did a police report. Uh, the insurance company said there was going to be someone to come and tow the truck. Uh, we actually had our second vehicle with us when we were traveling and they also gave us a rental, so everything was kind of like okay we were shaken up a little bit but no big deal we'll just handle it with the insurance I mean at the end of the day we didn't do anything wrong once we ended up talking to the insurance company um, everything was done at first they were telling us that it was going to be a total loss but we were kind of like it, it won't be a total loss because it's just kind of like the actual uh, key you know, thing that was broken and then also the steering wheel. So uh, when we looked online, it was probably about a thousand, a thousand five hundred dollars. So uh, that's what it ended up being. Uh, but once we went to go sign the papers and look at our actual truck, we noticed that our truck was completely vandalized. I'm saying like, you know, the actual floor of the truck was all um, bent. Uh, the actual um, lights of the truck were all bashed in the side like uh, side mirrors were completely gone one was almost falling apart um, you could tell the underneath of the truck was like the actual engine inside the truck there was damage in there and this did not happen with someone robbing us it was actually the insurance companies people that they hired to pick up the truck that completely vandalized our truck now the insurance company was going back and forth with us saying that no this is what this is how it was before we're like no we have pictures although we didn't film like videos we did take pictures of certain things and it could show that it was not like that before and it was very much a back and forth with the insurance company the insurance company would not answer their phones the insurance company was terrible to deal with everyone all of a sudden was on vacation so it was really really annoying dealing with the insurance company and it was to the point where I was already telling them look we're, we're probably gonna have to go to court with this because they wanted to they at the end of the day they wanted to pay us out and say that it was our fault for the damages and uh they didn't want to say that hey we are the ones who did the damage but also they wanted to pay us very very low for our truck in their minds they're like okay we'll pay you this x amount of money and you guys could put a good down payment on a new truck and hello <laughs> clearly they're not following the channel here but we're on a debt-free journey and we are not going to be in debt because of this we told them like no we want our truck back we were supposed to get our truck back from originally we were supposed to get our truck back anyways it's their fault that this happened so why are we going to be at fault for this when the insurance company and the people that they hired are the ones who damaged our truck even further because we were supposed to get our truck back but once they did those all those damages it would be like crazy amount of money anyways long story short um we ended up winning the battle with the insurance on December 31st we heard back from them that telling us that they would give us the value that we need to actually buy a truck that is similar to the truck that we had um, so at the end of the day it all worked out but it was a huge headache so if you ever get in a um, whether it's an accident someone's stealing from you make sure to take a lot of pictures and photos of your vehicle because you never know who they're going to hire and towing companies actually it's a thing where they actually do do a lot of damage to your truck or your vehicle when they do tow it so it's actually something pretty common after i did some research on the uh, internet 
but I didn't think of that. Like to me, I just thought that, you know, the insurance company had these reputable people taking care of this and that's not the case. So I, it was very, very stressful these last couple of months. We weren't even supposed to stay in Toronto all this time, but we ended up having to stay there because we were trapped there. We didn't have a vehicle to uh, come back to, to our land. So it just shows like Canada, I don't know, like this, I feel unsafe in the cities. And it's funny because people say, you know, don't you feel unsafe there in like the middle of nowhere, um, in, in, the, in the country, or people are scared of being more secluded and they're scared of bears and all this wildlife where wildlife really isn't the problem so much. Human beings are. There's like a loss of humanity in our society that you, you can't, you don't feel safe, especially surrounded by so many people. The safety wise, like huge thing like you're not safe in the cities and you know what this actually showed us a huge blessing we're exactly where we want to be that we feel safe here and although there are things that we have to you know precautions that we have to take when we're you know in a more secluded area I feel much more safer here yes we are aware of certain things like bears and and other wildlife and mostly the people that are telling you advice about this and telling you like to kind of like oh I'm scared of this are people that don't even live in the country or like you know off grid or anything like that so take it from someone that lives has lived in the country for four years um, that has now living off grid we're going to go into our one year anniversary of going off grid in the summer so maybe we can give you guys a little bit of tips for you not to be so worried about, you know, moving and having this type of lifestyle. Oh, and I want to mention is that we actually found our guitars at a pawn shop. Uh, funny thing is, is we called our, we called the police. They said that it was not a emergency since we did find our, you know, our guitar at the pawn shop. They told us to contact the officer that was taking care of our case. We contacted him and until this day. I think it's been a month now. We have not heard from him. So it's not an emergency. Uh, our guitars are long gone, but it could have been found on this pawn shop. Obviously, we did not take the guitar. I felt like doing that, like, you know, give me back my guitar. It's at a pawn shop. This is our guitar. But just so you could see how society is so messed up, uh, there was actually a news article uh, a couple of uh, months ago that about a gentleman that his Jeep was actually stolen and he had a tracker in it and it was found in Montreal. He ended up calling the police and putting like you know doing all the things and he knew exactly where his jeep was it was in a container being going to be shipped over overseas they said that you know we can't do anything about it that it will take several months for them to to investigate and most likely it'll be long gone by then he ended up complaining up to like some head office and he actually got it resolved but just so you see stealing of a car is not considered an emergency what is considered an emergency here in Canada? Maybe you're not wearing your mask when you're in public. Back in the day, if you remember, if you weren't wearing your masks, you probably, the police would come right away. But when it comes to an actual break-in, where's the police? If you ask me, that's kind of messed up. Having said that, we are going to um, have a, a lot of videos coming out now that we're here. I see you guys' comments. Guys, thank you so much for subscribing. We are at over a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much for being here, for watching our videos, for the comments. We've connected with so many of you guys from all over the world. All right, so I'm pretty much ready now to pull out the truck. I was able to inflate the tires with the bicycle foot pump. So. Now let's see if I can clear the road a little bit. If I can get my truck up here.
Is it safe to live off grid? Well, I think everything in life has its dangers and risks. When I first moved in, the gentleman did tell me that he saw bears, like small black bears around. And uh, I was a bit concerned in the beginning. I was even uh, trying to get my, or looking into getting my gun license. But as I got busy, I put that on the back burner. And so far, I haven't seen anything for the year that we've been at the property. And I'm always careful as to how I, I dispose of my waste. I try to keep it locked up so that it doesn't attract wildlife. So as long as you do your part, also that's the whole reason why we decided to get the dogs, is a way to keep these wild animals away just by them making noise and the scent that they live all around the property. It helps to keep the, the animals away, I feel. Because I stayed a while away from my property during the holidays and this few winter months, I was a bit concerned about being robbed. So I installed uh, some trail cameras around just to keep an eye on the property. But so far it's been safe. The neighbors and people that drive around the area are very, very good people. They're mostly hunters that uh, have lived there for a long time. So overall I feel safer living off grid because I feel like there's more violent crimes in the cities. So that's why also I chose to bring my family to a more peaceful, more quiet area so that the kids can run free and have fun outside without us being always worried about the dangers that are in the cities. We are going to make our way back to the truck before the wolves come out. Did you hear that? Just kidding. <laughs> That's about sound effects. <laughs> My kids would love to hear the howling of the wolves. I've have I have heard coyotes, but they're very uh, they don't sound like wolves. Anyways, we're going to make our way back to the truck. And we made it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe, stick around. We have a lot of amazing content coming your way. We have water! <laughs> <laughs> Michael, are you happy? Happy dance. <laughs> How does it clear is it? How clear is it? Wow. Yeah, wow, so much water. 